Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Hello, wonderful, beautiful, amazing, spectacular human beings, or dogs, or anybody out there who is listening, <laughs> and welcome to Culturing My Best Friend podcast, or pop, pop Culturing My Best Friend podcast, my bad. Anyway, wow, can you believe we're here? We've started. We have officially started. How long has this been in the making for? Over a year. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast has been my brainchild for a very long time and we decided to you know get the ball rolling (laughs) and actually birth this brainchild (laughs) yep anyway so because this is our very first episode we are gonna start with some (laughs) self-introductions so i shall begin (laughs) so my name is julie michelle and i am a freshman in college studying theater education my interests include theater, music, movies, painting, dinosaurs, and my boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I am a Ravenclaw, a type 6 on the Enneagram, and a Myers-Briggs type INTJ. If I could live anywhere in the world, I would choose a hobbit hole in New Zealand. I love all things Broadway and Team Star Kid. My biggest inspiration in life is my high school theater teacher, Miss Burns. And an interesting fact about me is that I am good at memorization. All right, so my introduction time? Yo. Oh boy. <laughs> my name is Lily. I'm also a freshman in college, obviously, um, and I'm studying flute performance. My interests include music, art, theater, the Disney parks, and my boyfriend. <laughs> my favorite Disney ride is It's a Small World, but I also love The Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Enchanted Tiki Room, and The Carousel of Progress. My favorite song is Music of the Night from The Phantom of the Opera. Um, I love Sanrio, cutesy pink, cutesy pink fashion and makeup, especially ColourPop. I collect rubber duckies, stuffed animals, pins, and Mickey ears. And an interesting fact about me is that I watch tons of ASMR videos. <laughs> yes, and we already have a plan for us to do an ASMR segment in the near distant future. Heck yeah! So <laughs> I will go ahead and apologize for that. <laughs> anyway, so... Yeah, that's a little bit about us. Lily and I have known each other for too long. Too long. (laughs) (laughs) I think we met each other in fifth grade. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And we kind of knew each other throughout middle school. We, like, kind of sort of, like, crossed friend groups a little bit. Um, Yeah. And then high school happened. And we hated each other. We hated each other. We hated each other. We're not going to get into that, but we ended up (laughs) becoming best friends. Yep. (laughs) Sitting in algebra class, we sat across from each other and then in front of each other, and then we just kept talking and talking and talking and not doing algebra work and talking, and now here we are. Fact. (laughs) Yes, we bonded over the drama, (laughs) and here we are living together, fresh mans in college. (laughs) So, that's us. Yep. Yep. First segment time. Exciting time. (laughs) So our first segment we're going to be doing on our show is a little thing I like to call nonsense news. This is a short little news section just about random crap. Uh, It does not have to be news in the world because, you know, it's a dark time and I don't like to talk about that stuff. So it's mostly going to be happy stuff. (laughs) Uh, And because it's nonsense, there's also going to be sprinkled in some super random things that happen to us throughout the week. So, Lily, if you would like to go first. All right. Well, the first story that I have is um, the mac and cheese in the cafeteria on Monday was amazing. It was so (laughs) good. They had a mac and cheese bar where you could customize your mac and cheese and the options were great. And the mac and cheese was so good. It was like... We have this every once in a while, mm-hmm. but for some reason on Monday, it was just spectacular. It just hit the spot, man. It I really did. It, I got it for both uh, lunch and dinner. I only got it for lunch because I was like, mm, I guess I should be healthy for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. So one of my stories is also took place on Monday. Yeah, Monday. <laughs> Oh my god, if you haven't heard, Harry Styles' 27th birthday was February 1st. I love 
that man. <laughs> <laughs> I have been obsessed with him since the beginning of One Direction, and I will continue to be obsessed with him. And what a guy. I have no idea about any of that stuff. Which is really sad, and I'm <laughs> going to force you to listen to some of his music. Oh, no. I feel like you would like it. I might. I feel like you would. Okay. <laughs> Especially his newer album. I feel like you would really like that. Anyway. All right. Next. Um, another little bit of nonsense news is that on Tuesday, I got bored and I painted my nails to look like strawberries. <laughs> Our room smelled like death all day. It certainly did. But it was worth it because they're super cute. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure, Jan. Sure, Jan. <laughs> Anybody that doesn't know, that is my favorite meme currently. <laughs> All right. Um, another piece of news. I performed a Shakespearean monologue on Monday in Heck front yeah, of my Shakespeare class. Learned it overnight. Ooh. She chanted back and forth in a little circle, and it was absolutely horrifying to witness. Hey, that's how I memorized stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I use flashcards, and I walk around chanting. I've never seen a human being use as many flashcards as Miss Julia and Michelle over here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking her family for birthdays, Christmas, anything, buy her just packs and packs of note cards because she's always writing down her lines on them. Hey, I got a lot of stuff to memorize (laughs) and it just anything to make it easier. But yeah, that was on Monday. I have to perform a scene this Friday. Who knows? (laughs) She's got to memorize that tomorrow. We're not going to talk about that. (laughs) (laughs) All right. In more news. We learned how to use the printer this week. Kind of. <laughs> kind of, right. Um, we had to print out the skeletal script for our first podcast episode. Woo! Yeah. Um, and we turned on the printer and it made a really loud noise and we screamed and that was fun. And then Julia <laughs> printed out an entire page with one word on it. She spent money on this. <laughs> I certainly did. And honestly, I didn't realize it until we got back to the room. We had a good laugh. Because, okay, here's what happens. So, you know, I got my notes. Well, Lily sent me her notes. And I'm like, well, I don't want to, I want to be surprised, you know? (laughs) Right. I don't, I don't want to see her notes. So I won't look over her notes. So I just like sent it off to the printer. (laughs) Well, I should have freaking looked over her notes. (laughs) Because she just had the word outro on one page. Oops. What a heck. (laughs) Anyway, I, I know for next time now. Yep. (laughs) All right, and was that your last piece of news? That yes, was it was. My so piece my last piece of news for all my Bachelor fans out there. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. The reign of Queen Victoria has ended. Thank the Lord. Thank she is gone. the Lord. We, every Tuesday when we watch The Bachelor, we absolutely rage over Victoria and Anna. We don't like her either. Oh, my God, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was insane. And when she finally got sent home and she talked to Matt. Oh, my God. Like, she. Oh, my gosh. Like, she, she was like, thought she was so smart. She, she thought she was it. Oh and he God. just looked at her. She was like, I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> like, why did she not sent home? Like, oh, my God. Thank oh, the yes. Lord. If you don't know what we're talking about, I'm sorry. But, um. <laughs> I'm a super huge fan of the Bachelor franchise, and mm-hmm. I'm getting Lily into it right now. And so that's like Tuesday tradition when it comes on Hulu yes. is we watch The Bachelor. <laughs> so, so Victoria fun. is going on Paradise, hopefully. Oh, so I hope we will so. probably see her again. I hate her as a person, but, but man, the drama she brings is she so entertaining. She is such good TV. And <laughs> that is the only reason why she was kept around for that long. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, in conclusion, I will be talking about The Bachelor often. <laughs> All right, so that's the end of our nonsense news segment. Yep. So next, we are going to start with a little segment for Miss Lillian over here Ooh. called Walt Lily World. I yeah. came up with that title in the shower. <laughs> so as I'm sure most of you know, I am a super big fan of the Disney parks. I have always been since I was a kid. We try to go as often as we can. Um, My dad's super into it too now. So it's like a really fun thing. We always sit around the kitchen table and we watch our Disney videos while we eat. Um, And I have always, always wanted to have my own like Disney vlog basically to talk about all things Disney parks. Um, And occasionally some little Universal might slip in. So, my biggest news story is that tomorrow, 
uh, Thursday, February 4th. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're recording this on Wednesday, February 3rd. Yes. For those who do not know. So Thursday, February 4th is the grand opening of Japan's Super Nintendo World, which is so exciting. If you haven't seen the promotional videos or any of the pictures, it is incredible. The theming that they were able to fit into the land is so cool. Yeah, I have barely heard about it because <laughs> contrary to Lily, you know, I like these things, but I'm not like obsessed. Right. <laughs> and so the only things I have heard about this is through Lily and the things that she has showed me are so cool. So we'll yeah. post a couple of those things on her story on Instagram. If you're not following our Instagram, what are you doing? Go to <laughs> Instagram at... Uh, Pop culturing my BFF <laughs> underscore podcast yeah, for that's it. a bunch of behind the scenes looks and a bunch of other random stuff. So, yeah. So, the rest of the stories are all going to center around Walt Disney World, which is like my main park. So, that's where most of my new stories will stem from. Um, Disneyland is closed still. So, there, there's going to be no news <laughs> from that for a while until it opens soon, hopefully. Um, so, the first big story is that um, Epcot's Grand Fiesta Tour, the three Caballero animatronics were finally removed. If you haven't heard about this horrendous story... um, Please tell us. Yes, I will. So if you haven't, if you don't know what the three Caballeros are, it's Donald, Panchito, and Jose. They're Donald and his little bird band. um, And they... There are three animatronics in the ride at the very end. This big kind of why you go on the ride is to see them. That's mm-hmm. the whole point. Um, and Jose, uh, the green parrot, he fell over in July. And when he was removed, they replaced his animatronic with a sweet little grave almost with a Poor sombrero thing. and some flowers as if he had died. Um, eventually, he was put back right before, um, actually, I went to the parks. Like, I'm talking the day before he was uh, put back. Um, and then just last month, Donald also fell over and they replaced him with a little crane. It's really morbid when you, like, look at the pictures. So we'll put some of those on Instagram because <laughs> they're hilarious to look at. Um, well, finally, uh, Disney got fed up with having to stand them back up. And all three of them were removed. um, And they were replaced with, I mean, in my opinion, they look like cardboard standees. But they're really just, like, static uh, things to look at uh, at the end of the ride now. And it's really sad. Interesting. Um, They won't return until the spring. So at least we know they're coming back. Yes. But it's really weird to look at. I think that until they return, they should keep the graves, like, outside of the ride. (laughs) And people can come and pay their respects because oh I think that is was such a good idea. Genius marketing. It'll get people back on that ride because it's really, <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, I don't consider it as one of the popular rides at Epcot. Mm-hmm. When we were there, it had a very long line. But you, when you think of Epcot, you think of like Soren and Test Track and that kind of stuff. When I think of Epcot, I think of Epcot. I don't know any rides there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. Next in our uh, little Disney tour of news, we're going to Animal Kingdom, um, the world of Pandora, which you have never experienced. I don't think I even know what that is. What is that? Um, Avatar. The the movie with the blue people. Not oh, the, the blue people avatar, the not the people. good avatar. The blue okay. Avatar. Um, well, there are two rides in Pandora, and one of them is a boat ride, Navi River Journey. Um, and again, just like Grand Fiesta Tour, there's basically one animatronic to look at at the end. And it's this really big blue lady. And mm. she is a shaman and she's kind of blessing the forest with all of her beautiful, like, singing magic. And on January 31st, our poor shaman lady fell over, which is a theme, I guess, for animatronics at Disney right now. They're all toppling over. They gotta step up their game. <laughs> Bruh, Disney, what you doing? <laughs> this is a new development. It never happens. Just like recently, um, some Splash Mountain and Jungle Cruise boats sank in the same like time frame with people in them. Oh, yeah. No, I remember you telling me about that. <laughs> um, so the shaman fell over. I think the next day she was propped right back up. Um, so hopefully she will permanently stay that way. <laughs> 
Um, the next story is also in Animal Kingdom in the little Dino Land USA section, which who visits that anymore, to be honest? I would. <laughs> well, right now, all the carnival rides are closed because of COVID. So oh. there's really only one point, and it's to ride Dinosaur in the back, which, in my opinion, isn't one of the best Disney rides, but some people will disagree with me. Hey, man. If I had money and I was going to Disneyland, I would live there. It's definitely worth riding once for sure. But I think it's um, sister ride Indiana Jones in Disneyland looks much cooler. Hmm. Um, well, um, the Primeval World Ride, which if you haven't been on it, is this horrible mix of a roller coaster and like spinny teacup ride. Gross. Um, yeah, I know. It's awful. <laughs> when I rode it, I wanted to throw up everywhere. Um, it's been closed for a while, and Disney just finally, um, on February 2nd, they filed a permit for construction slash demolition of the primeval world. So I think we're either going to see it replaced with something or just torn down and made maybe new land. I don't know what they're going to do, but I think Dino Land as a whole is definitely in need of some life. It needs... You know what it needs. What? It needs a Julia makeover. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see what you did with the dinosaurs. Oh, my God. I would love to see what I would do with the dinosaurs. <laughs> um, the last story I have is um, in the Magic Kingdom, my favorite park um, at Disney. Um, and this is some, I guess, not sad news because they're coming back, but um, refurbishment news. So the Mad Tea Party, which is... I guess, commonly known as the teacups. Ah, yes. <laughs> um, it is closing on February 22nd, and it's going all the way until March 4th. The ride is reopening on the 5th, um, so that's getting a nice refurbishment. So if you're planning a vacation to go then, which I don't really know why you're going to go in March, because that's not really a good time, um, it's going to be closed. And then the Swiss, fa the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse, which... I don't know if you've ever done that before. You climb up a treehouse, you walk up the stairs. So much walking. I haven't, Lily, the only time I've ever <laughs> been to Disney was when I was extremely little. So you wouldn't remember anything. I know what Swiss Family Robins Robinson, Robinson. Robinson. Yeah. yeah, I know what they are because I've seen the movie before. Mm -hmm. But. <laughs> well, it's a treehouse that you walk up. Lots of stairs. Um, that's closing on the 12th. And it is. Uh, um, then it's reopening on the 20, 25th. Yes. Um, and that is also closing for refurbishment. And that, I think, is all of the Disney news I have. Wow. <laughs> Tune in next week when we're going to talk about... The grand opening. Mario! Yes! My I'm boy so Mario! Excited. Bruh. All right. Well, we're going to take a little break. Mm -hmm. And we will be back with our next segment. I guess. Thank you to Anchor for sponsoring Pop Culturing My Best Friend. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free to use, which is always a plus in my mind. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Creators can make money from their podcasts with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. I know that we have absolutely loved our experience using this platform. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Welcome back. <laughs> what a nice little break. Yeah, that was great. Yes. All right, so our next segment is called Repeat of the Week. Mm -hmm. So basically, I love music. Same. And um, one of the things internally in my mind, like in life, I will have a song that I just like really connect to mm -hmm. and listen to all the time. For a week and then it'll change the next week so it's kind <laughs> of like my theme of the week yeah you know my theme song for the week but our segment is called repeat of the week so mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about the song and some standout lyrics we have yeah. so yeah uh, who wants to go first <laughs> <laughs> um you can go first i okay. it's your brain child my brain baby all right 
So my song is This Is Me Trying by Taylor Swift. Which from, I've never heard before. Which is, why didn't I make you listen to it before this? <laughs> what the heck? We'll listen to it in the next break. Heck yeah. Um, it's from her Folklore album. Okay, guys. I am a huge Swifty. <laughs> Just to put that out there. Um, so I love all of her music. Well, the majority. There's a couple things in there where it's like, mm, not my thing. But her two most recent albums, Folklore and Evermore, holy crap. I am obsessed. Well, this week, This Is Me Trying has really been standing out to me. And it's I've connected so much with it throughout the week. And I'm obsessed. Um, basically... Um, in her Long Pond studio session on Disney Plus, Taylor Swift goes into details about the meaning behind it. And it's basically like, you know, a kid has been told all throughout elementary, middle, and high school that he's like a gifted quote unquote mm -hmm. child and he's like the smartest in the class and all these things. So he's finally gotten into college and in the real world mm -hmm. and he, he or she, they, <laughs> are no longer considered gifted. Yeah. Um, wow. I, her mind. Right. I know that's a meme <laughs> in the Taylor Swift, like, fandom right now. Is like, she said this, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God, her mind. But, like, it's true. <laughs> it's true. So, some of my favorite standout lyrics that I connect to, um, the beginning of her song. I've been having a hard time adjusting. I had the shiniest wheels. Now they're rusting. Um, I, you know, I feel like college for me was like, you know, it was easy first semester. I feel like yeah. I got off like super easy I first agree. semester, but second semester we've barely gotten started and I'm kind of on the struggle bus. Yeah, same. Like yeah. specifically in one of my classes. Same. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I'm having a hard time adjusting to it. And that's okay. Everybody has a hard time adjusting to new things. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I had the shiniest wheels. Now they're resting. Right. Yeah. Deep. <laughs> it is her mind. <laughs> her mind. <laughs> All right. Um, the next lyric, I kind of combined a couple lyrics. Um, <gasps> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> she couldn't narrow it down to three. I, I really couldn't. <laughs> I would put the whole song in here if I really wanted to. But basically, I think this is in... I think this is in the second verse. Yeah, it is. Uh, they told me all of my cages were mental, so I got wasted like all my potential. Flash forward a little bit. I was so ahead of the curve, the curve became a sphere. Fell behind all my classmates and ended up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. I love those lyrics so much i think out of the entire song the those two things are like my favorite mm -hmm. um wow i don't even know what to say about it it's just like <laughs> let that sink in just listen to the song absorb let it. the song like sink in absorb the song become the song <laughs> like <laughs> i wow okay and the last lyric is um from the bridge which taylor swift is known for writing wonderfully incredible deep spectacular bridges mm -hmm, as you told me <laughs> yes that is universally the best part of all of her songs is the bridge but um the lyric that i connect to the most in the bridge is it's hard to be at a party when i feel like an open wound mm. yeah i have a hard time just being anywhere in public <laughs> <laughs> same <laughs> because i feel like like you know like I'm bothering people or like people yeah. take up too much of my energy like mm -hmm. I'm hecking introverted so Same, like it yeah. takes so much energy <laughs> but like also I feel going back to like you know when you're in a really rough spot but you're going out with friends and mm -hmm. you're just like hurting the entire time yeah and you don't want to be there and it's hard to be there I feel like this line is like one of the most relatable for the majority of people. Oh, yeah, there. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, her mind. Anyway. Her mind. That was All my right. repeat of the week. So, my turn. Before I get started, 
Please, <laughs> please don't judge me. No judgment. Only I'm allowed to judge yes. her. <laughs> I, as a whole, I don't listen to what people would consider normal music. As you heard, I <laughs> haven't heard Taylor Swift's song. I don't know any of One Direction. Um, I don't listen to any of that kind of like pop music or like just mainstream stuff. So I listen to mostly musical theater or like I guess video game soundtracks. Or and, that like, blue hair girl. <laughs> Vocaloid Hatsune Miku uh, <laughs> The blue haired girl um, So yeah I listen to I guess weirder Kind of like not, not, It's just your it's just your vibe you know Yeah Everybody's I, got a music vibe That's, that's your vibe, music vibe. Yeah. Um, So my repeat of the week um, Is a song that has been in my head For more than a week <laughs> um, Right now I've been really into Cats the Musical don't hurt me. I hate the movie. It's not just you. Um, so I, I bought the musical on DVD. I couldn't help myself. Um, and <laughs> I've watched it. I think I've watched it twice since I've gotten it. Um, I don't know. You watched it in the room. And yeah. I had. I was listening to Joji the whole time I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> she looked at cats like for a second and she physically recoiled and she would not watch the rest. <laughs> So I, um, so my repeat of the week has been Memory, which is obviously the most well-known song from Cats. Um, so it's kind of basic. It's not my favorite song in the musical, but it's one that I really enjoy. Um, and Memory, just as a whole, is a really cool song in the context of the musical. So more of, uh, instead of analyzing the music, like, towards, like, my life or how cool it is, it's just, like, in the con, like, the context of the show. Yeah. So, um, first of all, um, the bridge is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the burnt out ends of smoky days, the stale cold smell of morning. Interesting. Yeah, it's really, really cool. So obviously Grisabella, Grisabella, she's talking about how she's just like roaming the streets and she's just waiting for the next day to come for something good to come from her. Me too. <laughs> Same. Uh, but she, I don't know, this, this finally... Like, this is the the last song, or not the last song in the show, but, like, the big, big, like, big moment. It's the show-stopping number. It's the show-stopping number! Yes, exactly. Um, and Grizabella is, she's preaching out all of this to the, the, the tribe of the Jellicle Cats, and she's telling them all, like, why she wants to be let back into the tribe since she's been tossed out away from them. Um, and then a little later... Um, the youngest kitten of the tribe, Jemima, she sings Sunlight Through the Trees in Summer, Endless Masquerading, from the top of the car uh, in the back of the set. And she is supposed to represent, like, youth and beauty. She is, for I guess you'd say, she would be the new Grisabella. She's the glamour cat mm. that everyone wants to be. She's the youngest one. She's going to grow up to, to do great things. And her singing that there's, like, sunlight coming through the trees, um, like, that that there's, like, there's more to come for you. She brings Brizabella up off the ground for her to sing her final number. She's right before the big ending uh, verse, which is, touch me, it's so touch easy. Touch me! <laughs> it's so easy to leave me. Um, which is my third lyric that I want to go over. Um if you haven't seen Cats before, I don't blame you. Uh, you probably hate it. Most people do. Yes. Um, but um, this this ending thing, throughout the show, Grizabella shows up twice. Um, and every time she gets on stage, everyone, all of the adult cats, they run away from her. And the kittens, they go towards her because they're curious. And they always reach out their paw to touch her. But someone comes and swats them away so they can't touch her. Throughout the whole show, this is a theme. And then at one point, Grizabella sings her prelude to memory, the moments of happiness, not, not the moments of happiness, um, just like right before the moments of happiness. And she reaches out her hand backwards for someone to hold it, but no one does, and she leaves. Uh, when she sings, yeah. Uh-huh. That's so interesting. Yeah. Okay, I don't like cats. I have tried. I have tried. I, I feel like I've given it a fair shot. 
uh, when it was free on YouTube for a while. Yeah. Like, I really did try. It's not my thing. But, like, this, I think this is really interesting. It is. Yeah. So, after she holds out her hand, she leaves. And at the end, when she screams, touch me, it's so easy to leave me. <laughs> when she finishes her song, the whole tribe accepts as a whole that it's okay for Victoria, the white cat, to reach out and hold her hand. <gasps> Cute. Yeah. So I ship it. <laughs> no. <laughs> Victoria is, I guess what people would say, the second youngest kitten. She's the dancer. She doesn't have any actual singing roles. Um, except actually, for in the movie. Except for in the movie. <laughs> Which, Which I ruined. still haven't seen, and I really want to see <laughs> just for the laughs. Um, but Jemima and Victoria were actually supposed to be the same cat. They were split up. Um, because they couldn't find a dancer who was also just as good as a singer mm. as Jemima is supposed to be. So they were split up. So the young kitten is supposed to be the one to welcome the old decrepit cat back into the tribe. So when she's let back in, she's able to go to the heavy side lair and everything's all great and she gets to be reborn into a new kitten. And it's great. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh huh. Wow. It's really cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Well, that was repeat of the week. Yeah. That, that was, was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I like talking about music. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, that was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, this next segment is called Waving Through a Musical Window. Yes. <laughs> One big thing that we have in common is theater, musical theater. You know? mm -hmm. I feel like that's a big... Yeah. Thing we have in common. It's one of the main reasons we became friends, I think, is yeah. just through the theater program. Um, in oh, high yeah, school. yeah, yeah. We always saw each other, so we just. So it was kind of like, ah, uh, we gotta <laughs> talk, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, so in this segment, one of us, we're gonna switch off every week. We'll mm -hmm. talk about a new musical. Um, we're gonna give you a synopsis, talk about our favorite songs, talk about what role we would wanna play, yeah. and just our thoughts about the show in general. Um, so because our title is Waving Dear Evan Hansen yeah, themed. Yeah, Waving Through a Musical Window. We gotta gonna... start with Dear Evan Hansen. Oh my god. I love Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> it was really good. It was amazing. I <laughs> cried. And not just because I was sick. Like, I, I it made me cry. <laughs> so, let's get a synopsis. The winner of six Tony Awards, including Best Musical, and the Grammy Award for Best Musical Theater Album, Dear Evan Hansen is a, per is a deeply personal and profound contemporary musical about life and the way we live it. A letter that was never meant to be seen, a lie that was never meant to be told, a life he never dreamed he could have, Evan Hansen is about to get the one thing he's always wanted. A chance to finally fit in. Hmm. Dear Evan Hansen features a book by Tony Award winner Stephen Levinson, a score by Grammy, Tony, and Academy Award winners Benj Pasek, I hope I'm saying that right, and Justin Paul from La La Land and The Greatest Showman. Hmm. He did work on that. And, directed, and direction by four-time Tony Award nominee Michael Grief, who also worked on Rent and Next to Normal. Interesting. All his life, Evan Hansen has felt invisible. But when a tragic event shocks the community and thrusts him into the center of rapidly evolving controversy, <laughs> yeah. Evan is given the opportunity of a lifetime, the chance to be somebody else. Interesting. Yes. I did not write this synopsis. All credit goes to Playbill.com. Yes, yes, yes. The source for all of our musical needs. <laughs> the first half of that synopsis was very cryptic. Like, it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is actually the first time I've read through the full synopsis. <laughs> Interesting. But, yeah. Yeah. All right. Dear Van Hansen, mm -hmm. let's talk about it. I, yes, let's. We saw this show last September. We did. Uh, we both had season passes for TPAC, um, the same Sunday matinee. So we'd go together, but we'd sit in separate seats. And mm -hmm. we'd get to experience the show, and we'd message each other over Snapchat uh, during the intermission. <laughs> um, we like, I'm crying. What about you? <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, great fun. Um, so we got to experience a lot of shows together, most of which I'm sure we'll end up talking about. So that's yeah. just oh, yeah. some background on that. Heck yes. But yes, we did see this together. And um, I had only really listened to two songs before I had seen the show. 
And when I saw it, it was wonderful. It was really, really, really nice. Yeah. I, on the other hand, had been a mega fan of Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> um, I listened to the cast album on repeat. I'm like the biggest Ben Platt stan on planet Earth. True. <laughs> I, <laughs> he is a god. Um, <laughs> you, anyway, um, I own the bootleg. <gasps> The slime tutorial. The, my bad. I own the slime <laughs> tutorial for Dear Evan Hansen. Um, yeah. We have matching Dear Evan Hansen shirts we wear never. Oh my god, we do. <laughs> I wear mine way more than you do. Yeah. Because you wear all pink. <laughs> True. <laughs> and I don't wear pink. <laughs> so... Um, let's talk about some of our favorite songs. All right. Do you have any favorite songs? Uh, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is Sincerely Me, just because of how much yes! <laughs> we used to sing that together with one of our other friends. Um, it was, I don't know. It was Are just we gonna talk a good about time. Him? He's going to be on the podcast. We're going to make him be on the podcast. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So our friend Jake, <laughs> um, <laughs> we would act out this song. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, what a good time. That was so fun. I miss high school so much. <laughs> yeah, same. Well, yeah, Sincerely Me, I'd say it would be my favorite song of the whole show, just because of how funny it is. It's absolutely it's hilarious. It's like my, it's one of my favorite songs to scream sing in the yeah. car. Also, their harmonies are really, really nice, mm. and I love listening to, to like their, the their parts together The harmonies in the entire show are great. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. God, I love them so much. Man, you got any more favorites? Um, <clears throat> well, I have a special place in my heart for waving through the window. Oh, yeah. Um, I know that's like, it's the basic song. It's everyone's But like, it's song. good. But it's really, really good. And it's good. relatable. Um, before I'd seen the show, I actually used waving through the uh, waving through a window um, for one of my music videos for theater <laughs> class. So I just have a video. I pass by it on my computer sometimes and just look at it. Um, it's just me against the door facing the inside of the school, just singing against the door. She's waving through a window. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a door that has a window in it. And hey. it's so dramatic and, like, <laughs> it's really funny to look at and just see the screenshot of it as I pass by it in my files. You know what? I have performed waving through a window at a thing before. Concert? No, oh, not a concert. Like a... a a uh, recital. Recital. That's yeah. what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was out of all the recitals I've done. I hate recitals so mm -hmm. much. Yeah. Um, but I used to do vocal lessons and we would have to do a recital every winter and every spring. And um, I think this was my last spring recital mm -hmm. I did waving through a window. And honestly, oh. it was the best one I had ever done. Really? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It would have been satisfied. But I messed. Oh. But I was coming down with strep throat like that day, and I messed up the, the last to your union. I oh, my voice just yeah. like stopped, and I started oh. laughing. Oh my gosh, I'm shocked I haven't told you this before. I don't think you have. Oh my god. <laughs> the, well, the funny thing is, is that afterwards when I was talking to my voice teacher, she was like, she was like, we never would have noticed if you didn't laugh. <laughs> But I laugh at myself all the time, yeah. and so I could not help it. I feel that. Every time I mess up when I'm in the middle of a performance or something, I'm just, I always say something like, oops, or like, sorry, or, and, and I'm not talking to anybody. It's, it's awful. It's a bad habit. Yeah. Just like Ben Platt's song. Uh -huh. ben, bad habit. That's like exactly <laughs> what I thought when he said that. <laughs> so some of my favorite Dear Evan Hansen songs are Good For You, mm -hmm. because I sing it on the regular mm -hmm. to my brother and he hates it <laughs> um but also the harmonies near the end mm. are m some of my favorite Chef's harmonies kiss oh my god there's some of my favorite harmonies in the entire <laughs> universe um sincerely me i have written down of course yes so i fun. love to break in a glove and i used to not like no. it because it like for some reason, like, in my mind, I used to skip it all the time, and mm -hmm. I'd be like, eh, I don't yeah. really care for this song. I get that. But. <laughs> but. <laughs> but. After I saw the show, I fell in love with the song mm -hmm. and the meanings behind it and, like, you know, the stuff. The stuff, yes. The stuff. I, I yes. don't know words. It's <laughs> late. I can't think. But I do love that song now. Mm -hmm. It's very controversial in 
the Dear Evan Hansen fandom to like that song. Yes, oh. it is. Okay. Because nobody likes it <laughs> except wow. for me. All right. And my favorite song of all time in the show is So Big, So Small. Oh, uh, yes. If yes, I, yes, yes, yes. oh my God, if I'm on Spotify and I listen to it, like tears, tears, <laughs> tears. So many. Oh my God. Speaking of that, if you could play a role in Dear Evan Hansen, what would you play? I honestly don't know i really don't see i love the show just watching it but i don't think i would want to be in it i don't know i feel like that's one of the shows ensemble sure that's one (laughs) of the shows where i'd like to be in the orchestra for that oh yeah because it's got some beautiful music oh yeah Um, it really does especially near like the end the finale oh yeah like super pretty yeah I, I I don't think I have a dream role for Dear Evan Hansen. Maybe maybe the sister. I don't know. What about you? Oh, well, I know you, of course. Me. <laughs> you want to be the I mom. want to be Heidi Hansen. Yes. <laughs> Heidi Hansen has a special place in my heart. First of all, I can sing all of her parts, so we got a bonus. Yeah. Um her role, wow, is so unappreciated, mm-hmm. I feel. Like, we need to talk about Heidi Hansen some more because what a queen. (laughs) She, like, her entire life is devoted to Evan, whether he realizes it or not. And she is just a great mom. Yeah, she's a single mom and she's killing it. She's working. She (laughs) has, she's, I think she's taking like night classes at a college. I think so. Yeah. She's doing it all. I can't say that because this is a clean podcast, but what an awesome words. lady. What an awesome lady. Yeah, she's great. I love her. That is my all-time dream role yeah. of all time if I, for some reason, am on Broadway, <laughs> which is never going to happen. But yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Yeah. So that like was that too. waving through a musical window. <laughs> Mm. I promise I can sing slightly better than that on the regular, <laughs> but I don't really care. That was beautiful. Thank you. All right. So this next segment is going to be us reviewing movies and TV shows. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the big things when we moved in together yeah. is that I wanted to introduce Lily to all of the things that she has missed. <laughs> like the title of our show says, Pop Culture, My Best Friend. Yeah, that's, that's what we've been doing. kind of where the title stems from. Yeah. Because there's just so many movies and TV shows that are super popular and like important yeah. to see and she hasn't seen them yet. So I out on so much stuff and we've yes. watched so many things. So usually we watch... A movie every week we usually watch more than that but yeah. on here we'll talk about one movie we talk during the week or if we finished a tv show we will hear lily's that. thoughts about the tv show yeah we're currently watching friends yes so look forward to that eventually I... however long it takes us to finish it it with me it's not going to take us that long <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so Lily, why don't you introduce us to the movie we watched this week? All right. So we decided to start simple uh, at a movie that we both love and hold near and dear to our hearts. Oh, yes. Um, But it's a movie we haven't watched in a long time. Mm -hmm. So we decided to revisit it for this podcast. Uh, And that is the cinematic masterpiece that is Shrek 2. Yes. (laughs) Um, So if you haven't seen Shrek 2, what are you doing? Watch it. But um, a synopsis straight from the back of the box is... Happily ever ever, ha- happily ever after never seems so far away when a trip to meet the in-laws turns into another hilariously twisted adventure for Shrek and Fiona. With the help of his faithful steed, Donkey, Shrek takes on a potion-brewing fairy godmother, the pompous Prince Charming, and the famed ogre killer, Puss in Boots, a ferocious feline foe who's really just a pussy cat at heart. Yep. Yeah, that's Shrek too. Yes, it is. All right, let's talk about it. The beginning. Mm. Mm, I love yes. me some Prince Charming. <laughs> that sounds so weird to say. I yeah. know, but his voice in the beginning is so soothing and like, he's a really good character. I love him <laughs> so much. Um, he narrates everything he's doing mm-hmm. and I relate to that because I feel like that's something I would do. He's right. In the beginning, he's very self-aware that he is in a, a storybook, storybook and I <laughs> right. love that. <laughs> All right. So we got that. Well, then the honeymoon sequence. Oh, uh, yes. This iconic sequence. Yes. The music in the background. Music. Is... Accidentally in love. Yes. I love that song. Any music that was in 
the first two Shrek movies is iconic. I hear the song and I'm like, oh yeah, isn't it that song from Shrek? Yes. <laughs> um, I don't recognize them as their own music anymore. Yes. Oh. Um, some things that happen in the honeymoon sequence. We have Ariel kissing Shrek. I how always, did that happen? Yeah, I always wondered, like, what on earth caused, like, what, how? I don't know. <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie, Shrek's laying on the beach kissing Fiona. And a wave comes in over top of them, and Fiona's replaced with a mermaid who's supposed to look like Ariel. How did she get there? I don't know. Where did she come from? Where did she go? Well, where did she Shrek come tossed from? her into the ocean, and she got eaten by sharks, so that's where she no, went. No, Fiona did that. Oh, well, same thing. <laughs> Which, yeah, anyway. Some other things that happen, we have a Lord of the Rings reference. Yes, I love this moment. Um, they're smelting a ring, and it lands on her finger, and it says, I love you, and I love that yeah. part. We also have a Spider-Man, Tobey Maguire kiss reference. We do. Which I love that. I've never seen Spider-Man before, but I I still recognize the reference. Yes. Um, okay. Lily said they all have far quad hair. They do. Um, every character who's not important to the story has Farquaad hair. Yep. And you know the hair. It's the short bob with the bowl cut. Oh my gosh. So the characters who come uh, introduce the idea of going to see the parents. Um, all of these men come with trumpets. And they all have Lord Farquaad hair. Yes. And then the prince has a variation of Lord Farquaad's hair. Yes. Like, beachy waves Farquaad. We love beachy waves Farquaad. <laughs> we stan. Um, a question I had is why... If Fiona's approval, if Fiona's, like, approval of her parents was so important to her, why didn't she bring Shrek to them before they got married? That's something I've always wondered. Like, wouldn't they have wondered, like, if she got out of the castle? I have no idea. Like, she she was taken away by a prince. Yeah. And first of all, Prince Charming was really late to the party. Oh my god, yeah. (laughs) Like, like, if he was hired specifically to be the savior of Fiona, then why on earth did Farquaad and his men yeah, send Shrek has to get nobody, her first? Like, nobody references Farquaad in this movie. Right. Which is, like, A does shame. nobody know about <laughs> Farquaad? I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, so we have Donkey saying, are you there yet? Are you there yet? Are you there yet? I find that yet? really annoying. <laughs> Um, that's how you know you're an adult is when you find donkey annoying as a character (laughs) um well then we enter far far away and the song that's playing is funky town (laughs) and a little fun fact about my childhood is when my brother and i used to watch this Mm -hmm. we would sing funky town all the time (laughs) but one of the lyrics is Talk about it, talk about it, talk about right, it. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> well, we would go taco body, taco body, taco body. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> taco body? Yes. And sometimes <laughs> I still do that because I think it's really funny. Taco body, taco body. It yeah. does sound like talk about it. It does. <laughs> Anyway, um, um, well, also during the scene, there's all these references to stores, but like oh, yeah. storybook eyes, I guess. And then all of the 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 princesses have their own Hollywood mansion. Yes, absolutely. I love this part. It's so funny to see all the references to things. Yes. So they get to the castle, and everybody goes <laughs> silent. Right. Oh, why I nobody likes ogres apparently, and I don't right. get that. There are people too. What. <laughs> Ogres need respect. Yes. Anyway. Um, but a bird dies. Yes. <laughs> um, a man lets a bunch of doves out of a cage um, when Shrek and Fiona come out of their, their carriage. And one bird flies into the, the front of the castle and lands in between the king and queen's feet, <laughs> just dead. <laughs> and I always found this scene really sad because I love birds, but you hate I, birds. I don't hate birds. I'm just scared Scared. birds (laughs) which uh wink wink um might be something we talk about next episode (gasps) so i will leave that there anyway (laughs) um something that i thought would have been really funny is that when the king walks down the stairs (laughs) to go and meet (laughs) shrek and fiona is that so his cape brushes over the bird, but I thought yeah. it'd be really funny if they had the cape like bring the bird with. Them. Oh my god, <laughs> which is really morbid, but I think it yeah. would have been so funny. I can I can see it in my head. That's so it's, like nasty. Like, that's what I was sad. expecting but too, and hilarious. then it didn't happen, and it kind of made me sad. 
All right. Next, we have the iconic dinner scene. Oh, yes. The memes that stem from the scene are beautiful. Yes. <laughs> um, the queen's name is Lillian, which yes. I didn't know. And I think the king's name is Harold. His name is Harold. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, Harold's a jerk. He really is. He sucks. Just his cold stare across the table to Shrek. Harold <laughs> sucks. <laughs> One part that I always found was funny was that when the king brings up the idea of children, or in his case, grandchildren, <laughs> Shrek inhales his spoon and chokes on it. Oh my god. That's just, just peak comedy right there. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they have a quote-unquote food fight right but they're not throwing it at each other and they're not eating it they're just ripping it apart yeah that's it (laughs) and what's the deal with the soup that they dip their fingers in it's not soup it's like it's i don't know how to explain (laughs) it but it's like you know like a hand wash thing okay yeah it's a fancy person thing i don't know (laughs) So Fiona ends up storming away. Yes, and her. For, I mean, wh- I would storm away. She's I know valid. that. Yeah, yeah valid, I mean, valid. Um, yeah. Something I wrote down is that all Fiona wanted out of life was a happily ever after. Yeah, and now she got it with Shrek, uh-huh. and her parents don't approve of her version of happily ever after. And walking around her room seeing her old childhood things she's thinking of the stereotypical happily happily ever after she never got i mean like it's really sad and i feel like that's a big theme and the movie is what is your version of happily ever after right yeah 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 so the fairy godmother the fairy godmother oh my goodness what a queen is incredible first of all she comes in like glinda and the, the wizard of oz yes. she comes in in a storm of bubbles um yes. and her little her little song here um uh, her her version of bibbidi bobbidi boo yes. is really really funny and it all is. the things that she creates i love the puppy i've always loved the puppy i want to know what happens to the puppy um i don't really care <laughs> <laughs> i love the puppy um, and her, her manservant, Kyle. 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 He's one of my favorite parts in this movie. We love Kyle. We stand <laughs> we Kyle. We stand <laughs> Kyle. Um, so I went on a little deep dive about who voiced the fairy godmother. Right. Yes. yes. Her name is Jennifer Saunders. And some things you might recognize her from. She was in Sing and she played Nana. <gasps> Really? Yes. Oh. She was in the Minions movie, and she played the queen. Oh, my gosh. Of course she was. <laughs> she was in Coraline, and she played Miss Sink. Oh. And you don't know this yet, but she was in two episodes of Friends as Andrea Waltham, okay. which is Emily's mother. Which means nothing which to means me. Which means nothing to you, because <laughs> we just no finished season means. one. But everybody out there who has seen Friends, knows exactly who I'm talking about. Because okay. there is an iconic scene with Emily. So. I'm very excited. You should be. All right. Um, so the king gets kidnapped mm-hmm. by the fairy godmother. Prince Charming and hers dynamic <laughs> is amazing. So good. I love it so much. But they end up going to a drive-in. Yes. Which is Friar Fat Boys. Friar Fat Boys. Which is a reference to uh, the real life restaurant that I used to go to all the time when I was a kid, Bob's Big Boy, which oh. is a big part of the Austin Powers movies, which right. Mike Myers also started. <laughs> Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> anyway, um, I also just I love the expansion of the Shrek universe yes. in this movie with all the new side Same. characters, we especially got Captain the ones. Hook. Yes, from from the bar. The, yes. the I love apple. his song he sings. <laughs> <laughs> but the best character that they introduce is not Puss in Boots. It is Doris, the bartender, Doris, the ugly stepsister. The I ugly think stepsister. she's gorgeous. I love Doris. I think everybody is gorgeous, and Doris does not deserve that title. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, the next scene we move on to is the bedroom scene. Yes. Um, I used to hate this scene when I was younger because I just thought it was, like, so boring. Me too. Like, I was, on, like, this comedic high and then, then like, it was, like really low. sad. Yeah. But I have a great appreciation for this scene now because, like, you know, you start out 
Shrek is being mad about being there. He's like, right. why are we even here? The king sucks. Like, whatever. We should just go. But he walks around Fiona's childhood room and he sees, like, where Fiona is coming from and, like, what she grew up on and what her expectations for her life were. Mm-hmm. And he feels that he's not her true happily ever after and that Prince Charming is. Yeah, which is sad. Yeah. Especially, like, him looking through a diary and just him reading, like, Mrs. Fiona Charming, Mrs. Yeah. Fiona Charming. Like, you know? that's all she ever dreamed of in life. And what'd she get? She's an ogre the rest of her life. Yeah. Like, which she's happy with, mm-hmm. but he doesn't know that. Right. Yeah. I think communication is the biggest thing that they <laughs> lack in this movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So the next thing we move on to is the King Shrens. Shrens? <laughs> my King Shrens. Swing. Uh-huh. Another Mike Myers reference for anybody listening. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, the King sends Shrek off to go hunting or something. I don't remember. Right. Yeah. It was like a, I think he called it a dad son thing. Father son bonding time. Right. I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, but in actuality, he hired um, the famed ogre killer Puss in Boots to take him out um, yes. in the forest. This scene was very rushed and... Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing I've always wondered is why on earth could Puss in Boots not take Shrek down? He's in this universe. <laughs> he's a hitman. Yeah. I mean, just face it. Um, and his specialty is ogres, is killing ogres. Yeah. He's done it before. So and he doesn't take Shrek down. And he's like, let's be friends. Like, yeah, basically right them. away, after Shrek scares him off, he instantly joins their, their group of friends. And, like, yeah. why would a hitman who's being paid big bucks mm-hmm. from the king, mm-hmm. literally the king of Far, Far Away, why would he just give up like that? You'd think that, like, it'd be like a ruse and halfway through the mission he'd try to kill Shrek again. I mean, that would be great. That would be would... a really cool twist. That would be <laughs> awesome. awesome. But it, yeah. that is not what happened. This scene is very rushed. Mm-hmm. And that's all I gotta say about that. Right. Um, let's see. Oh, the potion. Well, before the potion. Oh, I have written down is happily ever after a commentary on the American dream. Oh, because you know everybody knows the typical American dream, but right. like, you know, people can have different versions of the American dream. Yeah. So, and people have different versions of happily ever afters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that's what I thought about during this movie. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot to think about when mm-hmm. you're watching Shrek too. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's an interesting concept to think about in this universe. Yeah. Okay, so the potion. Yes. Um, Donkey takes the potion. I want to know what happened to the dragon. Yeah, that's never explained. Yeah. Isn't that supposed to affect your well, your true love? Or yes, whatever? it is. Interesting. So- yeah, hmm. I don't know. I wanted to know what happened. Um, also, you shouldn't have to change yourself for the person you want to be with. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so they wake up and they're handsome. And there's yes. these three girls in the barn. Did you notice that the girl named Jill fetched him a pail of water? No. Yeah. You're kidding. Mm-mm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That completely flew over my head. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> can't believe I missed that. Are you serious? I do remember a girl named Jill, but it, it didn't occur to me that no, it was Jack cause she's and Jill. Because like, he wakes up and she's like, I fetch you a pail of water. And he looks down and they're like, get out of the way, Jill, or something oh like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought it was really funny and it was really subtle. Um, oh, dream casting Prince Charming. Oh? From our friend group. Okay. I think Marty... Oh my gosh. Um, so for those of you for those of you who don't know, Marty is my boyfriend. And he's usually cast as the very like I guess you'd say characterized villain. Yeah. Um that that's the role that he's usually typecast as. You're but right. He would be so good. He, he has the hair. So good. Oh my gosh. You're yeah. <laughs> He would be really good. And you know what? Along with that, I dream cast of the fairy godmother. Oh. But I'm stuck between two people. Okay. Number one, me. Oh. <laughs> because, okay. let me explain. Um, I just think 
that if Marty and I had the chance to have more scenes together, we would be like the most dynamic duo ever. That would be hilarious. Like, like specifically, I think just mother, son, or like even brother and sister. Yeah. You guys would be so good. We would. <sighs> I really think so. So I, that was loud. I hope that didn't get picked up, but somebody just slammed the door. Anyway. Cricks <laughs> um, <laughs> of living in the dorm. Yeehaw. Um, yeah. So me. Yeah. I think I would do good in that. I think so. Yeah. But another person I thought of was Mackenzie. <gasps> oh my gosh. Wait. Yeah. She'd be really, really great at she this. She would. Especially because her and I have very similar casting Yeah. Types, you're right. And that's what, I think that's why I like was struggling to pick between the two of Oh man. Us. Wait. She'd be so good. Yeah. Either as the fairy godmother or for the, um, Mackenzie is another one of our friends from the theater program mm -hmm. and she's also cast, um, like Julia and a very comedic, um, silly kind of character. And she would make an awesome Doris. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> She'd be so good. She'd be so good. Anyway, that's my dream casting. Um, so we get to the red carpet event. Yes. Iconic. Sleeping Beauty <laughs> falls Just asleep falls as soon as she straight out. comes out. Yeah. I mean, me. <laughs> also... <laughs> I always thought that the, the the scene with Thumbelina and the... I can't remember what the little guy's name is. Tom Thumb. Duh. <laughs> when they get swept up and thrown away. Like, I love that. I love... Hilarious. Oh, my God. I love that. So, the gang, Pinocchio, Gingy, Three Blind Mice, all them... Yes. Love them. ...are watching the TV, and they're really bored of the red carpet event. So, they turn on the Shrek Universe's <laughs> version of Cops called yes. Knights... I loved this because I used to watch Cops all the time. And my two favorite jokes in this segment oh, are, are the gold. pepper spray with, like, the pepper grinders. <laughs> yeah. And also the catnip where he's like, that's, that's not mine. <laughs> like, that's not mine. I, I always thought that was I really I love that funny. so much. Also, just any scene with Gingy and um, Pinocchio in it is hilarious. But yes. this scene is so convenient. Like, it's so convenient. They're broadcasting Shrek getting arrested at the perfect time yes. for them to happen to see it. Also, how on earth did they get to far, far away? I don't know. They have magic out. powers or something. Fair enough. They're fairy tales. There's more to Pinocchio but... than we know. Oh. So basically, <laughs> Pinocchio and the gang um, decides to break him out of prison. Yes. And Pinocchio has this whole Mission Impossible <laughs> sequence, which I love. We also learn that Pinocchio is wearing a thong. Um, True. Which, yes. you know, power to you, you know. Go but ahead, it reminded me of. There's an episode of Friends where one of our characters will wear a thong, and that oh. will be part of the episode. Oh man! Yeah. No spoilers, please. But like, I, no, I want. I'm not going to tell you who it is because you'll never guess. Here, but... let me make a hypothesis before we go on. Okay. Uh, my first guess is Joey, but that's all I'm going to say. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's something he would do. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so that's what that reminded me of. Um. Ah. Uh, the musical sequence. Iconic. Oh, yes. One yes, of the most yes, iconic yes. things in cinematic history. <laughs> this scene is amazing. First of all, I Need a Hero. Is I the Need a Hero is the perfect song, which, fun fact, was also featured in the movie Footloose, which we yes. found out that the dad in Footloose voices Lord Farquaad mm -hmm. in the first Shrek movie. And I thought that was so interesting. So, yeah. another coincidence? I think not. <laughs> I mean, I mean. Also, Jennifer Saunders' voice is amazing. She's so good. She's like, so where good. is she performing in other things? Like, I need more. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yes, um, the string section and the instrumentals. Oh my gosh! Yes, 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 yes. Wow, so good. It was so good. The light freckles on Fiona's face we see <laughs> while she's dancing. Her outfits. I mean, she's gorgeous. Uh, yeah, right, she's gorgeous right. as an ogre, too. But we rarely get to see her as a human. And yeah. I just, like, appreciated all of her, you know? <laughs> I love Fiona. I love her character. Same. I really I really do like her. Especially that she's, like, I don't know. She's very strong. And she can take out all those. Oh, yeah. In the first Shrek movie, her slow motion and karate was Yes. Wonderful. She's a queen. Anyway. Um, we also are introduced to Mongo. Mongo! Which is the giant gingerbread <laughs> man who lasts He is my favorite character in all of Shrek. Three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me so sad when he's just, like, slowly, like, 
going underneath the moat and then Jinji is so sad that that his friend is dying yeah like <laughs> no he needs me I need to be with him no. it's like me too Jinji I wish Mongo <laughs> lasted for longer or we got to see him in something else yeah but I think I think they did a very good job with his character and using him sparingly yeah, yeah. I guess so yeah that's true yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's all the, I have for the movie well the fairy godmother gets obliterated oh true yes <laughs> she turns into bubbles and I wrote we can't all come and go by bubbles but the fairy godmother can oh yeah she can <laughs> so and she did I thought that was very funny. <laughs> now, at the end of Shrek, there is a bonus feature. <gasps> yes. Far, far away idol. If you haven't clicked on this and your Shrek menu, you need to do that as soon as you listen to this because this is one of the best parts of Shrek 2. It really is. Far, far away idol is incredible. Yes. Like, I have vivid memories of my brother and I, like, acting out far, <laughs> far away idol in the pool. <laughs> that sounds yeah, so much that- fun. Yeah, that... That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Oh, man. I love this um, the songs that they all sing. If if you haven't seen it, Far Far Away Idol is like American Idol, but the Shrek yeah. universe, um, where Simon Cowell still exists. Um, the only change made to him is that he's got a medieval-looking sleeve on his regular black yes. t-shirt. <laughs> oh, my um, God. And- also, oh, my God. Okay, one thing that we wanted to know is... That. Okay, so Simon Cowell sings in part of it. Yes. Yes. Is that actually Simon Cowell sing? Because I've, I've never, never heard, heard him, him sing before. before. And I could not find online. And if they got him to sing for Shrek 2 and nothing else in the world. Yeah, I was trying iconic. to find other videos of him singing and I couldn't find anything. So, like, now I'm thinking that wasn't actually him. Yeah. But I want it to be him. Same. So, um, if anybody knows, yeah. please DM us. us <laughs> because I need to know. <laughs> Overall, though, um, I love that Far, Far Away Idol is interactive. Um, You get to listen to all the contestants. You get to vote for who you want to win at the end. And although I love Prince Charming um, and (laughs) Jinji and um, a little pixie, who I'm assuming is Tinkerbell, um, they have a cute little song together as well. But Doris, when we watched (laughs) watched Shrek 2, we voted for Doris. She sings... I think she sings Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Yes. Which I love the song in general. <laughs> but Dora singing, what a queen. Yes. I indeed. love her. Um, but no, no matter who you pick, I'm pretty sure Simon Cowell wins every I time. I think, if I remember correctly, because one time my brother and I like went through all of them to see all the endings. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> the majority of them are Simon Cowell. But I think if you click on like Shrek and Fiona, it's like actually them winning. We oh. need to look at this. Yeah. Like in a minute that or like something, <laughs> and um, I think Donkey also wins. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, I don't remember if anybody else does though. I don't because that was a very long time ago. <laughs> I looked at this, but yeah, Far Far Away Idol. Watch it's it. Great. Watch it's it. It's wonderful. Well, that's all I have for Shrek too. Yeah, me yeah. too. Wow, epic. So yeah, that was our first movie review. Mm-hmm. Um, there will be plenty more because I love talking about movies. Yeah, so much. Um, next week is going to be really fun. I'm very, very excited. Lily has never seen the movie we're watching mm-hmm. next week. I have seen it so many times because I'm obsessed with this movie. You even had to do a little class on it. Oh, yeah. I took film appreciation my junior and senior year of high school with my queen, Miss Burns. <laughs> and we watched this. I think we only watched this movie senior year, if mm-hmm. I remember correctly. We watched... A lot of this director's movies but i think we only watched this one senior year and i'm not even gonna say who the director is so yeah you guys gotta wait <laughs> i'm so excited anyway we're gonna take a short break and we'll be back after that all right we're back from our break mm-hmm. <laughs> we're not gonna talk about what happened because i might cry <laughs> Uh, uh, alrighty. So, yeah. this next segment is our sleepover games, is what we're calling it. Yes. Um, this we, is when we're going to play games. We don't like games. No, we do not like games. <laughs> but we're going to give it a try and make it interesting. Um, and sleepover games we thought would be really fun. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to play stuff like Truth or Dare, Never Have I Ever, um, Kiss, Mary Kill. And today, we are playing True Truth and a Lie. Yes. So, this was so hard. Yes. Because, because we know 
we know so much about Every each other. About each other. <laughs> so I guarantee you she's going to guess right off the bat what mine are. I thought mine up um, like. Mine were a little bit. They're a little bit difficult. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think so at least. Okay. I'm excited. I can't wait. So mm-hmm. yeah. We'll play two rounds. Two rounds. Yep. Yes. All right. So I'll go first, I guess. Okay. <laughs> so one. When I was younger, I had my room painted with a garden scenery. Okay. My favorite dinosaur is a triceratops. Okay. And my favorite flavor of goldfish is extreme blasted cheddar. Okay, well, I know that one's true. Where's the lie? <laughs> um, it's either the dinosaur or um, the wall. But I think at one point you said that you had your walls painted differently than they are now. So I'm assuming that your favorite dinosaur is not a triceratops. Are you sure? I think so. Okay. Well, am I right? You're right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite dinosaur is... I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Okay. But it's the Strikiosaurus. And what is that? Have you seen the good dinosaur? I'm assuming you have. Yes. I have not seen the full thing because we rented it on Redbox one time and mm-hmm. like half of the movie was like scratched up. So we didn't get to watch the whole thing. <gasps> oh no. <laughs> but it wasn't my favorite Pixar movie. That's what I keep hearing. Mm-hmm. Um, but my favorite part of the entire movie was the one dinosaur who had the animals around him yeah. and who talked to them and named them because it reminded me of me uh-huh. and therefore he is my favorite dinosaur all right yeah interesting all right my turn so i feel like after that this one's gonna be mm, a little easy for you probably okay all right <laughs> so number one i have never listened to a podcast in my life oh my god <laughs> number two <laughs> I almost died by Ice Cube. And number three, my favorite food is chicken tenders. Where's the lie? It's the first one. <laughs> the first one? I've never listened to a podcast yeah. in my life. You're wrong. Wait, what? I've never listened to a podcast in my life. Yeah, that's what I said. That's the lie. No. So I'm right. That's true. I haven't. I've never listened to one. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> the lie is my favorite food is chicken tenders. What's your favorite food then? Um, Fried chicken. i don't know why i've been head empty energy for the week just the entire week i was gonna say for the day but then i remembered my fall yesterday and then i remembered like um going off on a quick tangent here i was literally hand on the doorknob ready to go to one of my classes and I hear a thud behind me I turn around and she's literally laying sprawled out on the floor she had just fallen she tripped on both a chair and a backpack at the same time and just collapsed onto the ground and I said Julia where did you fall and she said on the ground excuse me I meant like how did you fall like what did you fall on and she said on the ground it was really funny I was laughing the entire time oh my gosh I almost cried and then I I mean I was scared at first I was like is she okay but on my way to my class I was just chuckling to myself in the dark uh, my class starts at 7 30 p.m so I was just like laughing to myself I don't know why I said it was the first one I guess I just completely forgot the rules of teachers oh, and why for a second. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Right, so, go my last one is, one, my favorite Taylor Swift album is Folklore. Okay. Two, my favorite theater show mm-hmm. I've been in thus far is Almost Maine. Okay. And three, the first rubber band colors I had on my braces were green and blue. How on earth am I going to know that? I didn't look at your teeth. <laughs> That's very specific, though. So I feel like your favorite album might not be Folklore, but I'm not sure because I can't remember what your favorite <laughs> album is. I don't think I've ever told you before. I don't think so either. I'm going to assume that's the lie, I guess. All right. So yes. your, your favorite album is not Folklore. You're correct. Oh, really? My favorite album is Red. Folklore is an extremely close second. Okay. But my favorite album of Taylor Swift's is Red. All right. Yes, because it has my favorite song in it. Good to remember. Yes. Cool. All right. And here's mine. Uh, Number one, I have Disney scented candles. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Number two, I had a pet guinea pig. And number three, I can curl my tongue. Hmm. Hmm. Why were we like, at the beginning of this, I was like, oh yeah, mine are so hard. And then you were like, mine are so easy. And then like, (laughs) I just got head empty energy. (laughs) Um, Okay. Disney sent a candles. Mm -hmm. I know you have, wait, hmm. (laughs) You have Disney scented something, like wax melts or something, but that doesn't count as a candle, does it? Not wax melts. Well, I, you've assumed that this is to be the truth, so I'll just tell you. They're little tiny, like, sample candles. So oh. they still have, like, wicks in them. They okay, okay. So, okay. yeah, you got that right, but okay, you still okay. got to decide. Guinea pig, curling or tongue. Hmm. 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 I don't think I've ever seen you curl your tongue before, but hmm, hmm. guinea pig. I feel like you had a guinea pig. <laughs> I have a strong feeling that you had a guinea pig. You seem like the kind of person who would grow up <laughs> with a guinea pig. <laughs> mm. All right, T- uh, clock is ticking. Ah! You have uh, five seconds. Ah, five, I four three. I don't two one pick one. I don't think you had a guinea pig. You're correct. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> that was just like a spur of the moment guess. <laughs> I've only had one pet in my entire life and mm-hmm. it was a hamster. And <sighs> its name was Frizz. Same thing. Yeah. That was my hamster. Um I can curl my tongue. It's a very new development. I figured it out on accident just like a week ago. <laughs> You couldn't see, but uh, I, I, I demonstrated. <laughs> um, I also learned that I could do the Star Trek, like... I thought everybody could do hand. that. I learned that just, I'd say, a couple days after I learned how to curl my tongue. Yeah. New developments for me. Very like exciting. five? What? Yeah. <laughs> I could never do that. Ever. Yeah. Weird. Really weird. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But yeah, well, I did not have a guinea pig. Well, However, I would like one. <laughs> And that was sleepover games. Yep. All right. So we're almost over mm-hmm. with our first podcast, which wow. is wacky. That's crazy to think I about. I am very tired. It is almost 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a headache. So good oh. times. Good times. I'm also like burning up. I don't know if you are. Well, you're wearing shorts, so you're probably not. But no. I'm like, you are in your clothes. I'm in my pajamas. <laughs> I am so hot right now. Like, I'm close to sweating. And I don't know why. But anyway. <laughs> Um, so normally before we end our podcast, we're going to end with questions yeah. and messages from fans. Yeah. Um, but we don't have any questions right now. We do have a message and we're going to get to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. But because this is our first podcast, we have some very special shout outs. To yes. Give. To our first followers on some of our platforms. Yes. So <laughs> let's talk about SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Um, oh, we goodness. would like to shout out. Guadalupe, Guadalupe from SoundCloud, the <laughs> bot that followed us first on um, SoundCloud. As soon as I made our SoundCloud account, um, a spam bot named Guadalupe followed us. So thank you, Guadalupe, for your support. We appreciate you. We love you. <laughs> you have a special place in our hearts. <laughs> we'll never forget. She's our first follower on anything. Yes. All right. <laughs> now, on Instagram... Our first official follower, besides mm-hmm. the two of us, was my boyfriend, Shane. Yeah, woohoo. Thank, Thank you. you. Shane. I love you. <laughs> Gross. No, you. <laughs> you anyway, um, no, you, because the next person we're talking about is our first YouTube subscriber. <gasps> yes. Which is Martine. <laughs> Marty, <laughs> my boyfriend. How supportive. Supportive men in our lives. We Heck love yeah. supportive men. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We love them very much. <laughs> you just, like, hit my knee and it scared me so bad. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, those are our shout-outs. Yeah. Um, we'll do future shout-outs yeah. for random things. Of um, Yeah. So, one of, the, one of the really cool things about recording on Anchor is that on our Anchor website, we yeah. have a section where people can send us voice messages. It's really, really it's cool. It's so cool. And they can be featured on our podcast. Mm-hmm. So I, like, casually mentioned this on our Instagram while we were getting everything set up to record. And we have a voice message. Yeah. So our very first voice message from bro. one of our friends. Yes. Let's listen. 
Hey, Julia. Hey, Lily. I'm so excited for your podcast, and I love and miss you guys so much. I hope we can hang out soon. Have a good time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh That's my God. so sweet. It made me, like, I almost cried when we got that message. Really? Like, yeah, because, like, bro, we have such supportive friends. Yeah, we really do. Um, I, we haven't man. seen you, Madison, in a long time either, so we miss and love you. And yes. it's so great to hear from so, you. So, so, so much. I hope you're doing good and everything's going to go great for you. Absolutely. Yeah. We need to have you on sometime. That would be that amazing. Would be we could talk about so middle school during the sleepover games. Oh, my God. And just oh, my God, no. <laughs> <laughs> mm, we'll think about talking about middle school <laughs> anyway um yeah so i'm gonna plug some stuff mm -hmm. um please follow our instagram yes, that please. is where all of our information will be coming out yep. that's gonna be our main social media yes platform for sure. so that is at pop culturing my bff underscore podcast mm -hmm. on instagram yep we i know i will be very active on there yes um I'm active on social media anyway. Yeah. She's so. going to be more in charge of the Instagram. I'm going to take care of the YouTube and SoundCloud updates. Yes. So Please usually, follow us on YouTube. If you comment on something on YouTube or SoundCloud, I'll usually be the one responding there. Oh, yeah. Which will be so much fun. I yeah. love <laughs> interacting with people because Same. I don't do it much in real outside life right we'd love to have feedback from you guys whoever listens oh to my this god episode yes afterwards. we would love feedback let us know what you liked let us know if there's anything that you'd like us to tweak a little bit um <gasps> if us... you have a movie you want us to watch yes please give us your requests um give us requests for songs to listen yes. to we already um, have a movie in mind for next week we do so but maybe but, the week after that yeah <laughs> please give us requests of what to watch yes. um, please follow us and yeah. share oh my gosh share it Hey, I'm going to put this out there. If you share and you tag us, if you share our Instagram page, our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, anything, and you tag us, we will give you a shout out. Okay. Yeah. That's scary. I am making that promise. Okay. Because I want, I want people to listen. Yes. This yeah. is her dream. And this is, I've never listened to podcasts before. So this is totally This has been a dream for a while. Yeah. So, so but I'm very, very excited to be a part of this. Yes. And I, yeah, this is going to be a great time. So we will give you a shout out. Yes. Until it becomes unbearable. Let's oh make that, God. let's make that a promise. <laughs> Maybe we'll do like a certain number of shout outs a week. That sounds good to me. Yeah. So All like right. three, we'll say th yeah. three shout outs. Um, sounds good please 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 i'm saying this again keep an eye on our instagram page mm -hmm. because we will be doing polls and stuff yes, for questions because we want to answer you guys questions mm -hmm. i i enjoy answering questions you know yeah so yeah um yeah i think that's it i think that we just did our podcast. first podcast yeah <gasps> Oh my gosh. Wacky. Oh my gosh. This is so much fun. And I can't wait to do this again next week. Yeah. Thank yeah. you guys for listening. Thank you so much. I love you. Good night. Thank you for joining us this week on Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at popculturingmybff_podcast underscore podcast for behind the scenes content and more.